Yo, what's going on guys? Bouchy Kills here, and welcome back to part 3 of uh, the custom shift boot. And uh, in the last episode, uh, I just did a quick video because it was dark out. And now the problem is it's like drizzling a bit, so hopefully it doesn't start downpouring. Um, and uh, yeah, so last night I made the video of me taking the exo exoskeleton of what this is what I call it uh, I'm not sure what you really call it but out of the shift boot that was there at the bottom and uh, what I did was to take it out was here uh, you can see that I took the razor blade and uh, let me flip it around and I cut here cut here and then uh, I diag diagonally like split it sorry I'm trying to give you guys some light so you can see and I just did that so that uh, if the next owner I'm gonna keep these parts that I take out uh, so if the next owner doesn't like what I'm gonna show you of what stuff you can do to it um, they can just put this back on and uh, then what I did was, since it was a bit rusted and I'm a bit anal about stuff like that, uh, I took 60 grit, uh, 60 grit sandpaper. This is maybe a little bit too aggressive, but it got all the rust off for me. And uh, this usually go. This is a pad that goes on like a palm sander, but this is what I had laying around. So you can use like any kind of sandpaper really, besides wood. I'm not sh too sure. And then uh, I had this uh, Walmart uh, mate salad. Uh, what's it called mate or uh, like what's it called satin that's the word I'm looking for uh, paint I used you can use gloss or any other color you want and uh, yeah but I just chose the satin black um, and that's how you take the shift boot off so then you come out with the product of this which I like a lot more it's not super perfect but it's good enough because you won't see it um, he before. Uh, oh yeah, um, today we're gonna. Sorry about that. Um, had to go for a second, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys what happened. Uh, Cause sorry, I was jamming out before, but uh, I cracked from inside here all the way to all the way to about here sorry about here and I tried cleaning this up but the the like rag towel that I was using wasn't really that good it was just a Lysol wipe that I was using and it left this like white residue stuff on it but, uh, yeah, so I cracked it trying to take this screw out, which was a pain in the balls. But then I just... Sorry, I'll be back. Craziness going on. But, uh, yeah, trying to get this bullet out. And, uh, eventually I got the idea of drilling it out. And, uh, are the screws still in here? No. Alright, that's a problem. Oh wait, they're here on the floor. Hold on. But, uh, I'll show you what the... And, oh, I guess that locked it. Lefty-loosey, not righty-tighty. Alright. Ooh, it's hot in here. Alright, where are my screws? Oh, here they are. Yeah, so my screws have like this 
like this big head it's like a screw and then a washer kind of thing and uh, I just drilled that top this top piece off and uh, then I was able to just pop that off and then see here there you can see like where the screw is still in there which is fine and all oh yeah check for any water we'll check the trunk because uh, you know it is the swimming pool after all uh, ooh yeah I think we think this is where the water is getting in right here oh yeah all right Nothing is pulled up. Okay. Alright, so. That will be another fix. I'm gonna get some sort of sealant. Ooh, that is. Maybe it's getting in through there too. I don't know. But, uh. Alright, at least there's no water in her. So that's good. Ugh. Don't know if you guys can hear that, but please don't downpour on me. <laughs> this is the only spot I was going to do it over there, but then it started drizzling. And I didn't want to get my clean bandanas wet. But, uh, yeah, back to what I was saying. So, we drilled this out, and I had broke it. So, let me flip it over and show you guys what I did and what you guys can do. Okay, and we're back. So, what you can do, you can get a solder, um... This is 150 watts. Try and show you guys that. Well, right here says 150. Uh, that's a bit much to be using, but this is what I got to work with. So, uh, yeah. So what I did was I I meant to like take the duct tape off, but whatever, it's there now. So I put the duct tape here to kind of keep it in line with stuff and then uh it's kind of like welding it's plastic welding and it you just go in and then out and then back in like the back of it just like that all the way around and uh for the most part you can't really see it um until you get to the cup holder and that's where it's like all messed up but i did get in there that's where you can really see what I'm talking about you just you just uh, go like you go in and then behind it kind of thing and then uh, what you can do is take a zip tie and melt it on there I didn't have to do that I just had access material and I just with the tip because uh, my tip is like a flat edge I just went like that when it was hot and just spread it and I spread it around to make it look semi decent and uh, since this plastic is super thin uh, you really want to be careful especially with this much wattage uh, if you start seeing a lot of smoke that means you're burning material and that's bad and uh, obviously the smoke is bad for you to inhale uh, so you just want to let off the trigger that's what I did I just held the trigger until it was super hot and then just kind of did my thing and then it would cool off and I would do it again and uh, that's what you can do to fix it it's really not that hard uh, this is my second time no my third time doing it I uh, did it to my lacrosse stick and it was and it was fixed for a day but then yeah I broke it again but that's whatever um, cause that's, you know, it, it, it holds up, but you know, it's not the strongest thing in the world. Uh, and I didn't really penetrate it that much. That was my first plastic weld. And then, uh, there was a gas cap for one of my motorcycles that broke, like the top bursted on it cause it doesn't have a breather on it. So, uh, plastic welded that back together and, uh, yeah, I, 
this time I think I did really good compared to the last times and uh yeah so moving on to the bandana part okay so what do you really want the bandana for um you don't need to use it but uh here I have a couple examples like here's like a cross one here's just a plain regular one a red one that's ripped uh, then I have here, uh, my grandfather gave me this a long time ago. Uh, it has skulls and stuff on it. And then here, you know, I got the regular navy blue, the regular black. And it's cool because of all the different designs. Oh, and here comes rain. Uh, then here I got from when I was younger, Spider-Man one. Then here I got a newer one, uh, just skulls. And uh, I think... You mostly want to go for a big one, so uh, like these are big. The mint one that I, the mint one that I got, which is in this box. Oh no, it's starting. Uh, actually, I. Oh no, I put it in the wash so that I could use it here. But let me get the stickers out of the way of the rain because I don't want them to get ruined. And, uh, yeah, so here you just have your basic stuff. So the biggest one that I have so far is just the regular ones. But the red one's ripped, and then, I don't know, the, my interior isn't really that bluish. So I'll just do an example of this. So what you want to do is take your old shift boot and then basically have a material that's bigger than it and have it replicate what uh, it's going to be. So I think it would be cool to have this kind of centered. So you just do that and you know, you could, you could fix it if you're anal like me, but I just wanna show you guys. And then uh, you guys can make the triangle shape and then uh, have a custom shift boot and like since I only have one hand I can't really show you but you can stuff this in there and then when you go to use your exoskeleton or you don't have to if you don't want to but I'm gonna use the skeleton and then you would just take the shape right here put it on top and then uh, like sew the corners and stuff to make the triangle and then when you put it on this just fold the sides like around this like have it around it so that this is attached to this and then uh, you, when you put it in the car it goes obviously on the other side of this but this clips down and your new shift boot is attached to this and hopefully won't rip off on you and then you have it in there and my car has clips so this clips in and then uh, this plastic piece goes this plastic piece goes on top of everything and you know hides everything and uh, there's an example for you guys because I won't be getting my material uh, until next week um, and I just kind of wanted to show you guys how to do it if you want. I mean, obviously, I'm only one guy here, and I didn't, I couldn't really show you that much, but I showed you what I'm going to be doing, and, uh, yeah. So, that's how you fix any plastic things that are broken for you. Sometimes you can't fix any, any I mean, sometimes you can't just went through freaking sorry guys I'm angry but that's how you do the DIY shift boot and uh, I'll show you guys further when I actually have my material that I want to use so don't throw this out just keep it lying around um, and uh, maybe if you go to sell your car maybe the person wants this uh, I also have a bunch of extra parts because we got new parts and stuff for this car. Um, so it's always good to keep those around. 
and any spare things. And then uh, next, what I'm going to do is uh, take some stickers, put them on around here, you know, around, uh, sorry, I'm pissed off.